everyone and welcome welcome to this episode of deeper into him and today i am joined by taylor johnson and he is an intimacy coach for men to help men master their sexual energy so they can create the life of their true desires and i've been following him for a while and he speaks into so many topics that i think a lot of people don't even dare to so i'm very mm. excited to speak with him today to hear his perspective thoughts and ideas on this whole masculine feminine relating and sexuality so before we dive in too deep already, I would love to hear a bit more about you, Taylor. Like, who are you? What's your journey? What's your, yeah. what's your story? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, yeah it's, I'm really excited about this topic. You know, I usually talk about other things on podcasts, but when this <laughs> idea came up, I was like, oh yeah, let's have mm. this conversation. This is, this is great. Um, so for me, my journey into... Um, I guess you could call it more mindful or conscious sexuality. Intentional sexuality started mm. a little over 10 years ago. I was really struggling a lot with premature ejaculation and low sexual confidence. And like, I would even avoid sexual encounters with women or I would even avoid getting to know women because I was mm. afraid of that moment when the sexual encounter would come mm. and that I wouldn't perform well or, you know, mm. or I would disappoint them or something like that. And so... <clears throat> That was a challenging period of my life. <laughs> yeah. And and that forced me to do some uh <clears throat> wow, something in my throat. That's okay. Excuse me. Uh yeah, that forced me to do some some introspection and some life evaluation. And it, you know, I was asking the deeper questions like, oh man, am I even a man? Like if mm. I can't adequately please this woman, like what kind of man am I? You know? Mm. So there's all sorts of self-worth stuff. Um linked in with this. And eventually I found myself in a relationship, a longer term relationship with a great woman. We were together for over three years and we lived together. And I started to notice that certain things seemed like they would impact our level of intimacy and our level of connection. Mm. Uh, for example, I was, <laughs> I, I was addicted to porn and I was watching porn all the time. Yeah. And I noticed that I started to notice that the more I watched porn, the less our connection seemed to be oh potent and alive right. and the less I wanted to have sex with her, you know, and, and the more we would get into arguments. And so I would start to experiment with, oh. oh, maybe I won't watch porn for a week and see what happens. And sure enough, my sex drive or my sexual interest went up with her. And so I started exploring that. And then I started to explore like, oh, I heard, I heard in a Tantra book that, hey, maybe there's something to try when you don't ejaculate every time you have sex. Yeah. And, you know, for me at that time, I was like, fuck off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, the fuck is that? Um, but then I started, I was like, why not? You know, like I'll experiment with it. And I yeah. found that sure enough, like that had an impact on our intimacy too, not just in the bedroom, but in, yeah. you know, in our overall relationship. And so long, longer story short, from that point on, like I became really interested in this stuff. And I was a professional photographer and filmmaker at that time working in the business realm. And I've worked for all these major corporations. And at a certain point, I realized that all the books on my wall, all the books on my bookshelf, they all had to do with sex. They all mm. had to do with relationship. There was like David Dita books galore, Montag Chia, like Urban Tantra, you know, mm -hmm. all these things that are just, um, yeah, they're just like staples, if you will, you know, mm -hmm. of going this direction. And then eventually I had the thought like, you know, this is much more fun to talk about than <laughs> photography even. So why don't I try to do this? Like, I'd rather talk to people about this than take, you know, more photo shoots for companies I don't necessarily believe in. Yeah. So that's how I got to be where I am right now, which is, you know, sex educator, coach for men, et cetera. Wow. I love this. I love this story because I think it's a story for so many men. I think so many men go through this where something starts happening to their erection or their ejaculation. And then, you know, it really affects how they connect or if they even connect. And, and it's such a deeply impacting thing. And they live within a secrecy. Yeah. Right. Totally. Live, Can't they, talk about it. Can't talk about it. Definitely I mean, don't talk to your, you know, brothers about it. <laughs> no. When I think like, it's like, isn't it like one in three men have some kind have, have something happen to their erection. I think like the numbers are way higher than most people realize. I think it's gotta be more than that because yeah, pretty much so every too. guy I've talked to at some point has not has been able to get an erection when he's wanted right. to, has ejaculated before he's wanted to, or, or, you know, any number of things. So I think, yeah. Yeah. And I think this like goes off the, the, the myth that men always need to like, we can always have an erection on command and we should be able to have sex with anybody at any moment. And I know that's a whole other tangent for another yeah. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that's a myth. 
<laughs> we're not, we're actually not machines. Yeah. Yeah. I, I usually, when I have this conversation with my male clients, when they have some issue with their, with their erection, I say, you know what, maybe you have a good bullshit meter, mm-hmm. right? So maybe your dick is telling you that not now, not this, I'm missing something. I'm not totally. feeling safe. I'm not happy. I'm not really connected. Is that usually what you would, um, I, I realize you're very specialized in this. I'm trying to get a very simple answer now, but <laughs> <laughs> is this what you think is usually underlying it? That there's something on a deeper level that maybe isn't aligned into the, into the act that's about to happen? Uh, you know, man, there's, there's so many, there's so yeah. many possible reasons why you could ejaculate before you want to or not be able to ejaculate or have erectile right. dysfunction or anything right. like that. And, right. and one thing that's not often talked about that you mentioned that I just want to hit here yeah. is that I do think that our genitals and our sexual response system has an intelligence of its own yeah. that's actually yeah. linked in with our larger intelligence, but we isolate yes. it so much in our life that it feels separate, you know, mm-hmm. it's compartmentalized. And yeah. maybe if your penis isn't getting hard, like maybe you actually don't want to be having sex with this person. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So to really bring it into kind of a masculine, feminine or relating dynamic, um, yeah. I have a lot of women that are asking me this, like how to support your man if he is struggling with something like this. Because I think, so one of the big things I live with is that the um, women are most afraid physically that something will happen to them and men are most afraid to be made fun of. So if you really start respecting that in the masculine, that, you know, like the the biggest fear, really terror is to be made fun of or to be ridiculed. Yeah. Then a situation as having something with your erection or ejaculation, that being discussed by your woman is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how how can a woman or or a partner to somebody who who is who is suffering with this how how can you best support your man? Hmm. Yeah, that's a really good that's a really good question. And the immediate answer that comes up well (laughs) the immediate thing that comes up for me is wanting to make a joke and then i realized you know maybe i'll wait a little bit for a joke Um, (laughs) so what comes up for me is is that in my experience and a lot of guys that i've talked to and my understanding of polarity like if if we're talking about a heteronormative relationship here and a man and a woman when a woman experiences their partner having some sort of problem or challenge with their sexuality. Like if she takes initiative and goes ahead and starts researching it or trying to come up with answers or something like that, it can, it can bring up a lot of stuff for the, for the man and it can not feel very good or supportive. Even it can, it can reinforce like this, like, Oh, am I not okay? You know, sort of vibe. And so really a great access point, a great access point is to ask a question like, Mm paired with an observation that's the best way you could possibly do it so an observable like as if a camera on the wall were to see this like hey baby i noticed that the last time we had sex you you know and you ejaculated there was this look in your eye that i interpreted maybe as like sadness or disappointment or something like that and i'm just like curious if you if you wanted to talk about that Mm. you know Mm. that could be a great opener and because that's like pairing a, there's no arguing with your observation. Right. You know, as long as you don't say anything like you were mad or you were, you know, because that's not really an observation. That's a judgment. If yeah. You're like the look in your eye. I felt this when I saw that, you know, yeah. Yeah. or I've noticed that the last three times we've had sex, this particular thing has happened. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you want to, you know, talk about it with me because I really value you and I want to support our sex life and I want to support our relationship and you're important to me. Yeah. So what if it, now I'm going to make a trick here. What if it really does affect the woman, right? So I know from my personal experience, I have absolutely been cases where it really affected me as well. Like a woman, like the, the, the sexual act is also a nourishment for the feminine partner. And let's say a man totally. like has, has a very quick ejaculation. Like I've, I've been in relationships where that was really hard to be with also for me. Yeah. And I did not want to make him feel less than a man. I did not want to criticize him. But how, like, what is the best way to then bring it to the space that it does affect you? Yeah. But that you're not trying to belittle or criticize or judge. Totally. This is, this is a... 
dance of communication, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, and as women, you're dancing here with so many things. Like, and yeah. one of the primary things you're dancing with is all the programming you get from society around mm-hmm. needing to please, you know, mm-hmm. you need to be the one to please your partner, please the man, like don't yes. disappoint, don't upset. Like your role is to serve. Right. Yes. And that's, that's a problematic piece of programming that exists in our society. Yeah. And, and so the other part of this coin is that you're a real sovereign human with your own needs and emotions. And like, that's fucking important, you know? So if you're say, for example, you're with a partner who's regularly struggling with premature ejaculation and it's impacting you, you know, it's impacting your desire to connect with them. It's impacting your feelings of safety and closeness with them, et cetera. Yeah. Like primary thing you could do, or one thing you could do is say, Hey, I am noticing that there's something I would really like to talk about with you about yeah. our relationship. Are you open to that right now? And mm-hmm. if not right now, then let's, let's set a time where yeah. we can go into a conversation. Um, yeah. And so there, there you're like framing the context. Like, yes, I want to have a conversation with you about something in our relationship that's right. impacting me yeah. and I'm not going to like throw it on you right yes. now, but I, but I want to have this conversation, you know? Yeah. And so then st- step one, Step two is when you actually, well, if they say no to that, then I would yeah. say leave the relationship. Right. <laughs> like hundred percent, like get out because yeah. they're not valuing you as a person. Right. Um, right. But say you do make it to the conversation piece. Yeah. And then again, it's, I would, I would start with an observation. Yeah. You know, start with an unarguable observation of something that has happened. Yeah. And then specifically how you feel about that, like when that has happened. Right. And there's like some language judo you can use in there. But <laughs> if you if you stick to I statements, like this shit is really effective, you know? Say, yeah. hey, I've noticed the past four times or three times, whatever it is that we've had sex, you have ejaculated and then like uh, it seemed like you, you disconnected from me or you right. were not interested in being right. sexual anymore. And for me, I, I felt pain when that yes. happened because yeah. I really want to experience pleasure. And I want yeah. to experience your love and I want to experience your touch. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, that, that hurt. Yeah. Um, and then, and then here's another uh, conversation, Judah piece that you could <laughs> ask them, could you tell me what you heard me uh, just say? Right. That one's so powerful. Totally. So this is yeah. all coming from nonviolent communication yeah, yeah. stuff, but it's like, it's simple, but like it needs to be said over and over again. This stuff is really effective. You know? Yeah. And this, these situations are very, very delicate and it's very easy to trigger each other like crazy totally. in a setting like this. So the, this, these things like nonviolent communication are so important. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to yeah, add go one on. other piece yeah. to that. Yes. And, and then yes, nonviolent communication. And one thing that is often not talked about in nonviolent communication is like you could use all the technique in the world, but if your yeah. underlying intentions and your underlying emotions are charged yes. and you're like, fuck you, like that's going to come through, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So before you have that conversation, if you can get to a place that feels like loving and balanced, like that's going to be infinitely helpful. And then closing that up with some sort of request, like, are you willing to work on this? Or are you willing to have support, you know, for our relationship? Yeah. You know. That's gorgeous. Do you think like being in a mass in the more masculine role in the relationship, like that is that something that a man is receptive to to hear to be spoken to like that? Yeah. If you if you go through those things and if you if you make the request, like are you know, are you willing to do this? Yeah. Because then it creates the space for them to step into their own right. masculine leadership. Like yeah. if they choose to. Like it yeah. will be sensitive for them. Yeah. And like yeah. part of masculine sexual yeah. leadership is to be able to step into the discomfort, you know, yeah. and say, okay, yeah, like this is something I could work on and right. I'm going to do that because I value myself and yeah. I value you and I value our yeah. relationship. Yeah. But if yeah. there's any, if there's anything like you need to do this, yeah. like that, you know, you know, that doesn't work. Like I, I think a lot of women, we think that that's the powerful way to speak. Mm-hmm. like say what you were doing and what's wrong and how you need to be different. And it creates a lot of very, I think imploded men. Totally. Because, you know, it doesn't invite, it doesn't, a man then has to like almost compete to become the king again. And he totally. doesn't want to, right. Yeah. He doesn't want to go through that. So it, it, I think it creates a lot of kind of passive complacent men that are just like, okay, whatever. Totally. If you can, if you as a woman can lead with your, vulnerable authentic mm. emotion yeah 
and let them really feel that and really feel the impact of your interactions on your system and your connection with them. Like, bam, that's going to open up so much. Yeah. That's so without having any sort of neediness or like you need to fix me attached to it. Just be your authentic sovereign self. Yeah. That's real. That's such a beautiful thing you're mentioning. I think that's the biggest challenge for women is to actually be vulnerable and not be vulnerable to get something. Totally. So that you don't, you don't show your pain because he then will change or you think you're guilt tripping him into changing, mm-hmm. but really just showing like that hurt. Yeah. And to not expect uh, something to come back. I'm curious about your thoughts on another piece that, you know, I know from my personal experience and also from my clients that, you know, sometimes in these kind of interaction, we really touch like kind of an inner child piece, right? Where we can get mm-hmm. triggered. And with men, that's often slightly like sulky or it can be a bit like angry Mm -hmm. right and and if i can make it more specific it's like when you tell a guy i uh, actually i'm not feeling into sex so much and it was leading to that and the guy saying you know what now i'm gonna have blue balls and and that's gonna hurt Mm -hmm. right to me that sounds like a a, more of a like a little boy that is just really disappointed that something isn't going to happen and is responding to that by kind of being grumpy How do you, as like a mature feminine or a mature being, and this may be bigger than just masculine and feminine, how do you respond to that? Because this is scary. So when, like for women, especially when there's a bit of the anger in there, the the, the angry charge from the masculine, that can be really like, um, you know, that that can be scary where the man is afraid to be ridiculed. That's when in my brain, something happens like, am I still physically safe because he's angry now? Totally. So what's, what's a way to be, maybe this is, we're going to like black belt shit right away, but (laughs) 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 what's a way to kind of be with, with this triggered state in men, especially around sexuality? Mm -hmm. Mm, That is a good question. That's a good question. Um, and, and what I shared earlier, I think really applies. Like, obviously, if you actually feel like you're in physical danger, like leave. Right. So I'm out. not talking about that. And I'm we're not talking about, about that. Subtle. Totally. And, and it's important to just say that again yeah. and again and again, yeah. just to have that be in our psyche. And yeah, approaching with as challenging as it can be sometimes, like as much as you can stay in your loving, compassionate center. Mm. <sighs> And this is a practice, Mm -hmm. you know, as much as you can stay in your loving, compassionate center and respond from that place and say, Hey, you know, I, I hear that you really, you know, that you're disappointed right now. And for me, like, like this is really important and, and here's why, you know, or like, you know, the more like, yeah, the more you can just stay in your authentic sovereign, like I feel this. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I know that's not always the easiest thing to do. And it is, it is a practice. And yeah. this is part of the practice of sexual yoga. Just as for yes. men, the practice of sexual yoga is to, is to work on not getting triggered, you know, when right. something like that happens and yeah. integrating that energy into your system and seeing, okay, my partner doesn't actually owe me anything. Right. You know, right. Sex can be a celebration. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I think we also discussed this a little bit on my, on my, um, uh, on my Facebook and my Instagram, like what about the situation where a, um, where people or a couple doesn't want to have sex so much anymore because a woman feels kind of obligated to do it, especially mm-hmm. in longer term relationships, right? They can start feeling like an obligation and he can start feeling like it's kind of owed. And I'm not saying that he really thinks she should do something that she doesn't want to, but mm-hmm. that maybe deeper down, he's like, yeah, but it's Thursday evening, right? We're doing this tonight. Um, so that there's kind of, yeah, this kind of sense of being owed on a very subtle level. Like, what do you think is happening there when, when maybe I'm, I'm trying to understand the masculine side of this, the man side of this, of, of expecting sex and then it not happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's complex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's complex. I'm thinking about a really a good friend of mine recently who is in long-term relationship with his partner of like yeah. five years, you know, and they're yeah. married and, they're having different levels of sexual desire right now. And mm-hmm. this, this question is up, you know, mm-hmm. and one of them, well, yeah, I'll just say like he yeah. is wanting more sex more regularly than yeah. she is. Yeah. And 
this is a real thing that happens. Like, and if you're in long-term relationship, you're probably going to go through periods of this, you know, and yeah. probably some of you listening right now, you've already experienced this. I'm sure like yeah. people navigate this in different ways, you know, yeah. People, yeah. people navigate this by defaulting to the lowest common denominator. Right. And then maybe, maybe one of them self pleasures more, you know, right. this is where right. some people decide to open their relationship or, right. or try different practices. And there's, there's so many different possibilities and reasons for this. It's kind of hard to like pinpoint just one. You know? So what can a man do to help a woman who maybe feels like sex is a bit obligated mm -hmm. because he's expecting it because it always happens on Thursday night? Yeah. So, right. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> if there's a guy listening to this and you're starting to feel like, so, you know, you have like, yeah, if you feel like you're ob obligated or not you're obligated, but your partner's obligated to give you sex or whatever, yeah. or you're expecting yeah. that. You're like, expecting it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. This is an yeah. opportunity for you to like take a step back and, and, and try to try to release that because think about it. If you're like, when are you, when have you been expected to do something regularly? Like, and how did that feel in your life? Right. Like maybe it felt great at first, but over time that's going to start to build up resentment and over time mm -hmm. that's going to start to build up some disconnection, you know? Right. And sure. Like you can think of a time back in your life where that has happened to you. Yeah. So if you can just like flip the roles there and put yourself yeah. in her shoes, um, like that is going to build up resentment and disconnection over time. Yeah. And it's also ultimately not going to result in you getting what you want over time. Sure. You right. might have sex on Thursday, but then you might not experience like the fantasy you've always wanted to happen, have right. happened two weeks later because your partner's in this strange polarity dynamic with you where you're feeling you know, like you're expecting them to do certain things and that's right. not going to open to anybody. Right. Like, nobody's going to want to like initiate a threesome or, anal sex or whatever your fantasy is, yeah. you know, dressing up like superheroes, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just like one practical example. Yeah. Um, and if you start to treat sex as a gift, it mm. just makes every sexual experience that much more rich. Yeah. Too. You know, if yeah. you can really feel in your body and especially if you're in long-term relationship, if you can really take a step back, maybe even take some space from your partner and like approach their body as a gift you know, mm. like their lips as a gift, their fingers, their arms. Mm. Like if you can step back into that space as you know, and it's a practice mm. that's going to do so much for your relationship. Mm, I love that. It's so beautiful. It's so, it's so beautiful to hear a man say that. It's really like, mm. yeah. what do you think is the, is the, um, the main challenge for men in relating or connecting to women or what's, what's, what do you think is the main pain point there? Hmm. Well, I think there are different categories of humans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So right now I'll speak to the people who I think would be listening to this podcast. Right. And this is, these are people who I think are interested in deepening their sexual connection with themselves, their relationships, their yeah. partners, et cetera. And so yeah. what I see as a as a challenge right now in the landscape of all this stuff yeah. is there are a lot a lot a lot of women's groups and women's sexual empowerment things going on and yep. and women getting together and learning about their bodies learning about their anatomy learning about the pleasure response cycles and all this stuff and and there aren't as many men stepping into this and so yeah. i see a lot of times there's women who are are exploring this stuff and they really want their partner to explore it with them and their partner yeah. is maybe doesn't know about it or isn't mm -hmm. as interested or is, you know any number of things like that so yeah there can be a mismatch there you know and right. a lot of times men don't even know where to go for that sort of thing yeah but i see this as a challenge in this particular community of people that i think would be listening yeah. to this yeah do you think men can be in a sense like intimidated almost by that some men, mm -hmm. <laughs> some men, definitely some men. And it's, it's interesting because um, generally speaking, men respond really well. Uh, men are inspired to grow often by competition yeah, you know, and by sort of like, oh man, like you could do better than that. You know? Yeah. Usually that's coming from another man. Right. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but men respond really well to that sort of thing. Whereas yeah. women oftentimes respond to praise you know, mm. so there's that like polarity difference. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes 
there can be an intimidation factor for sure. Yeah. And, and I think other times there, that intimidation can show up as like, just not seeming interested at all. Right. Like distancing, you know? Right. Right. Um, what do you do in a situation where you feel that maybe your man is a bit intimidated? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. communication, communication, yeah. communication, you know, bringing it like into the space. First step. Yeah, yeah. Bringing it into the space. Like if you yeah. can communicate, you know, in create an invitation for a conversation, like, right. hey, baby, I would love to talk with you about this because yeah. you're important to me because our relationship is important. Right. If you keep leading with that, right. like that's like, oh, I've, I'm valued as a man. Yeah. Like, I am valued. Our connection is valued. Yeah. And that's the foundation for whatever interaction is going to happen next. Right. You know? Right. And then, and then talk about this and, and you can express your desires, you know? And, and the, also the reality of, of this shit is like, not everyone's going to want to change. Not everyone's going to no. want to do work. And so this brings up another mm -hmm. big shadow piece for a lot of people when they start mm -hmm. going into this stuff. It's like, if you start doing this work and you start really changing yourself, you start yes. really changing your patterns. Yeah. It's possible that your partnership isn't going to continue to serve you, you know? Yeah. So then what do you do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do yeah. you stay with them because of some other pattern? Yeah. Or are you able to, you know, consciously, lovingly separate yourself because you see it, that's not actually serving you so much anymore? Yeah. I think it's so beautiful that you're saying that. Yeah. When you start working on, when you consciously start working on what's coming up in your sexual space and your relating space, and you go through it in this beautiful way that you're describing, like the, the, the nonviolent communication, like really bring into the space without attacking. Mm -hmm. It's uncomfortable because you're, you know, if you show up for that, you're going to have to deal with your shit or you, yeah. and you have to, you, you, you're, you're called into your sovereignty. So you can absolutely say like, I am not going to go into that conversation, but then, it, mm -hmm. then it's a conscious decision. It's something you have to speak it. You, you have to speak out. Totally. Say like, okay. I don't actually want to deal with this right now, or I do. And both of those are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Both of those are uncomfortable. So I, yeah, not everybody will follow that. And you might not, yeah. you might not end up in a position where, where you're, where it still feels compatible or, or like it's serving you. Totally. And that's, and that's okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. That is okay. It's okay to leave relationships. Yeah. Um, and there are going to be the, the, the situations where your partner is going to want to rise and is going to yeah. want to do the work and meet you in that space. And yeah. those people exist too. And, yeah. and if that's the case, like the inspiration for that needs to come from within them, mm -hmm. their own inspiration versus like top down coming from you or anywhere else. Like this is really important for men. Like if they're going to do yeah. this work, they need to want to do it for themselves. And if, if you're in a situation where they're doing the work, quote unquote, but it seems like they're only doing it because you want them to and not because yep. they want to like huge red flag. Yeah. You know? So glad you're saying that. <laughs> huge red flag. And because, for any guy listening to this, like yeah. if your partner's really wanting you to do this stuff, if you don't want to do it, don't fucking do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if you're going to do it, make sure that you really want to be the one doing this for yeah. you. you yeah. Know? For that you. doesn't come from a pleasing to your woman or like trying to be agreeable or trying to be the good guy. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is what I try to um, teach the women that I work with is that, you know, we can support our men but like the worst thing that you can do is tell a man how to do his meditation for instance <laughs> he's not even if it's super beneficial for him he's not going to want to do that you don't want your woman to tell you how to meditate totally he needs to find that himself so all you can say is like hey by the way i learned about a osho meditation maybe it's your thing that's it yeah and then oh, it's yeah. his decision then it's his it's his path and to start trusting men again that they've got themselves yeah right? That we start trusting men again, that they, you know, like they have maybe a different path than you would as a woman and, and, and different resources, but to trust them that they have got themselves and that they will be moved to change or transformation when it's their time. Totally. And to not do the emotional caretaking for them, to not, to not, you know, you don't, you don't have to do it for them and it doesn't work. Yeah. You really have to respect the man's need for freedom and yeah. for his own, his own decision. Yeah. Totally. And freedom doesn't necessarily mean polyamory or open relationship. No, <laughs> no know? it's that beautiful sentence that you just said of like, I'd like to have a conversation about this. Would you be like open to that? That's respecting yeah. his freedom. You're not totally. like imposing a conversation. You're saying, if you'd like to do that, I would, I would like to yeah. do that too. Yeah. And, and 
I know I've heard from a lot of women and I see like on my social media posts and comments I've had with people, they're like, where the fuck are all these men? You know, right. like, I want a conscious man. You know, yeah. I want to find somebody who's doing this work. And, so where are all the men? <laughs> yeah. And they're out there. Yeah. Like they're, they're absolutely 100% out there, you know, yeah. and yeah. these groups are starting to grow. Like their sacred yeah. sons is an awesome organization. Oh, yes. It's like this spinoff from, the Mankind Project. And mm -hmm. I've done the Mankind Project. I was going to do Sacred Sons this year and then coronavirus okay. happened. Um, but there's, you know, those organizations are happening. Uh, David Dita is doing workshops. Mm -hmm. John Wineland is mm -hmm. another amazing person. He's doing a lot of men's work. I'm mm -hmm. going to go do a retreat of his next mm -hmm. month. And so these, these, Great. and I'm do you know, I, the courses that I run, I literally have men in them from all around the world. There were a couple men in my last one from Amsterdam, actually. Yeah by Yay. the way. <laughs> um, yeah. And like South America and Australia and uh, Africa, like really, like literally everywhere. Yeah. And so like it's growing, you know, yeah. it's growing. Yeah. Do you it's think growing. maybe women can't recognize always a good man when he's in front of her? Wow. That's a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. I think all genders and all bodies have trouble recognizing a good Goodness. person when they're in yes. front of them. You yes. Know? Amen. Yeah. Uh, because, because of the way our society has, has programmed us to always want the next best thing and like, Oh, yeah. you're not complete Buy this product. Oh, you know, yeah. they're not good enough. Look at this superstar, et cetera, et cetera. Like yeah. our, our programming around satisfaction and contentment is, is yeah. like, is fucked up in my opinion. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you think men have this? Because, okay, this is just a narrative that men want to sleep with lots of women or always want to have the new thing. I know this isn't completely true. I know women have this just as much, but yeah. just playing into the stereotype here. Um, do you think that's coming from the same socialization of like, oh, mate, there's a new thing. There's a new thing. There's a new thing. Mm. <laughs> <I wanna read. laughs> that's, that, this is a rich question uh, for me, at least. Um, I think it, it can be many things, you yeah. know, and I know guys, and I've been in the space before where it's like, ooh, the next shiny person, next shiny person. Like, yeah. ooh, look at that. Wow, she's hot. You know, like, boom, boom, right. boom, like going around. And even yeah. in a long-term relationship, just getting bored and wanting wanting a new partner. And this is like, I am fundamentally of the belief that we are not a monogamous species. Yep. By that, before you, like anyone listening, jumps into the judgment thing here, by that I'm saying, I would bet there's maybe zero people listening to this right now who have only had one relationship in their life ever. Right. You know, we yeah. move for often from relationship to relationship to relationship and our interests change and our commitments yeah. change and our passions change. And that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a natural part of the process. And so when you're in long-term relationship, anyone who's been in long-term relationship for a while knows that at least desires are going to come up for other people, yeah. just regardless of your gender or your, or your, you know, genitalia. And yeah. I do think that I, you know, I'm not even sure I want to gender that because the more I talk to women, the more I learn about this, like women seem to be almost equally interested in, in more, you know, yeah, in, in new partners and this sort of thing. And, and this topic, you know, your podcast is around like, what do men want? Yeah. You know? yeah. So my, like just my personal story, like what I really want in a relationship yeah. right now, yeah. like I've, I've explored polyamory, that took so fucking much energy. <laughs> it's God. exhausting. It's, a, hard, it it's a lot of work. There's beauty and yeah. holy shit, yeah. you know? <laughs> and a lot of guys are like idealize this, yeah. this whole idea of dating two women at once. And like, <sighs> it's great until you try it. And then yeah. you're like, holy shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it, it's, there's, there's, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot more effort than you ever imagined. Mm -hmm. And, and, it's like, I think that comes a lot from the objectification culture and porn. It's like, oh, right. two is better than one, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'll be so much more of a man. And it's like, okay, but then what happens if you want to go to a family gathering or a party? Or right. Actually, right. these are, you're all just beings having, you know, sovereign yeah. emotions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so what I, what I really want right now is I want more of a monogamish committed partnership where yeah. my partner and I can explore sexually with each other and yeah. then also with other people at the same time. Yeah. Like that's yeah. super interesting yeah. to me, like yeah. with another couple, yeah. with another yeah. individual person, like, because that sort of ticks the box of exploring new, the new situation yeah. without having to navigate multiple partnerships, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I have, I have 
not fully experienced that in my relationship history, but I do know people that have, that have had that and it seems to work really well for them. Yeah. Their relationship seems to be a lot more stable yeah. and, and uh, plenty loving and plenty new, you know, yeah. plenty like exhilarating to have these experiences over the years. And, yeah. 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 There, I want to touch on two things. One is there's this, an amazing book called Untrue. And it's, it's this, by the sex researcher that pretty much found that actually women are more unfaithful or want to be more unfaithful sooner and more so than men. And that this mm. whole idea of evolution that like a woman wants to stay with one man is a completely, completely like, maybe that's true for some women, but absolutely not for all. There's also an evolutionary thing to actually sleep with lots of men because it's really hard to get pregnant. Totally. So uh, she's a sex researcher. She found that actually women much sooner than men want variation in their relationship but they internalize yeah. and they think something's wrong so they don't act on it as much yeah. but they actually they're the first ones to want variation much sooner than a man and so totally. what we think is the stereotype and what's actually happening there's a very big difference between the two yeah yeah, yeah. and to follow that up with another yeah. book recommendation yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> there's this book called tell me what you want it's oh, all yeah, no, it's no. all about sexual fantasy and this researcher he did a he did a big study surveying all these different sexual fantasies and the prevalence of them and oh. then the, really interestingly he looked at the impact of acting out these sexual fantasies in relationship and like how like how they actually like what benefits did they give to a relationship, you know, or oh. what did they take away from? And so it's this fascinating thing. So okay, so for example, Things like anal sex and bondage, you know, yeah. and slapping and choking, like those things are common sexual fantasies, yeah. right? Like yeah. lots of people have them. Yeah. And when you explore those in the context of long-term uh, monogamous or monogamous-ish relationship, yeah. um, it can be, you know, it can add to your relationship. It can add feelings of closeness and, yeah. and connection. Yeah. And also the risk for them to backfire and destroy your relationship is very low. It's very small. Yeah. yeah. It's very small. Yeah. And then what is a much more common fantasy and it's close to like 90% for all genders is some sort of group type sexual experience. Yes. Yes. And maybe that doesn't necessarily mean having sex with multiple people. Maybe that means you and your partner have sex in a room with somebody yeah. watching or in a room with others, but that often does mean a threesome or a foursome or some yeah. sort of scenario like this. And in that book, the author talks about how those experiences, if done well with good communication, have the potential to positively impact your relationship like way more than exploring, uh, you know, anal sex or something like this because of the level of intentionality that you need to bring to that in order to have it be positive. Generally oh, that's speaking. That's so beautiful. I love that. And those experiences <laughs> also have the potential to royally fuck your relationship up <laughs> if you don't do it well you know right. so yeah. it's like playing with fire but it was yeah. really beautiful for me to see it and i've experienced yeah. that like i've had yeah. a, a few threesome a handful of threesome experiences and yeah most of them have been shitty you yeah know, to be totally honest i think the amount of that. like yeah. really positive threesome experiences i've had is is like like less than five right you know yeah three yeah. maybe two you know <laughs> it's getting less and less <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. I don't know how we got on this topic, but like that, that's, yeah, it's an interesting well, one for me. What I find fascinating about desires is that it's, for me, it's like the most innocent part of yourself. Like we, yeah. we put it so much in the shadow. Like let's say you have a rape fantasy and, and, and whether or not you've had any kind of sexual abuse, but you have a rape fantasy. A, yeah. a lot of people think that's something really bad to have. Mm -hmm. When actually I think that the desires that you have or your fantasies are like this very unconscious, like your soul speaking to you saying, I need this kind of food mm -hmm. and to start respecting, to start respecting that. Okay. There's a part of me that needs it. Like maybe needs some kind of bondage, maybe like has to play that out and to see that as a nourishment to yourself. Cause maybe something that will actually click in, right? Like yeah. maybe that's something you've, you've, you've needed to experience in a controlled setting in a pleasurable setting, you know, in a safe setting. And then actually something in your psyche clicks in. Yeah. And I've heard that from a lot of people that when they actually got to do it and it was in a, well intentional and, and safe and communicated setting that actually it felt like something fell into place. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to share a, a personal experience around yeah. that, that I think is relevant that, um, so there was somebody who I was with years ago uh, who had experienced a traumatic sexual assault and rape yeah. uh, earlier in her life. And 
she was interested in um in, in exploring a rape fantasy yeah and we talked about that um yeah. hold on there's like a no that's me actually oh that's you that's okay <laughs> it sounds like the same machine i have over here um yeah so she was interested in exploring this right and it was like for for reference for everybody listening like when we had sex prior to that like occasionally occasionally she would experience some sort of flashback or something yeah. and go yeah. into a freeze response yeah. or start crying and have all these things come up and you know we had talked about it and i knew that that didn't necessarily mean like anything bad is happening or ne neither did it mean stop it just meant like be present with and breathe and check in you know and yeah. say hey you know are you here yeah. you're safe so one day we decided we wanted to try this this rape fantasy Mm -hmm. And it was like super fucking edgy for me as yeah. a guy, you know, like embodying that space, like total consent. Yes. And still to like step into that was uncomfortable at first. Yes. So we created like boundaries and we created like a safe word and we did all yeah. the things that we were supposed to do. We like looked it up. Like, How can you do this? Well? You know? <laughs> I love that. Because it was like, I don't want to fuck with this. Like right. this person has serious yeah. trauma, you know? So yeah. if we're going to do this, I want to make sure that we do it really well. Yeah. And and we went into the experience and we had a safe word and, yeah. and yeah, like I, I did the things like I yeah. tackled her and like held her down and I'm not a small guy. Like I'm a strong person. I know that, yeah. you know, and I can, I can restrain people. And yeah. like, I did that and I like ripped off her clothes and like, you know, we did the fantasy yeah. Yeah. and she did experience some sort of flashbacks during that yeah. experience. And the, the element of her ultimately being in complete control. Yes. Like she could have she could have stopped it at any moment, you know, if yeah. she said the thing. Like yeah. she knew that she was in complete control the whole yeah. time with me. Yeah. And that for her was an incredibly healing experience to yeah. in some ways like relive some parts of that, but to do it on her own terms and repattern parts of her brain and her nervous system. And it was, yeah, it was an incredibly beautiful experience that shifted a lot actually for her. And so, yeah, I noticed there's like a little edginess in sharing that story yeah. <laughs> publicly, um, yeah. but also like it's, it was a beautiful experience and I'm not a therapist. I'm not going to recommend that anyone listening to this go out and try it today, but if you're interested, like do your research because there are yeah. ways to do that well, that, that can be fun and incredibly sexy and also healing. You know, yeah. it wasn't just healing. It was really sexy too, you know, for yeah. both of us. Yeah. Yeah, I I thank you for sharing that because I, I realize that's very personal and it's raw. Um, and it's very important. It's very important that people know that there's a way to do this that is healing and that's safe. Yeah. Um, there's a book called Healing Sex, if people are interested in that. And that's really about how to go into intimacy when there is trauma. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's lots of resources online on on how to do this well. And, and to know, to, to permit yourself that you are, allowed to have an experience like that right and you're allowed totally. to want that and, and and to not always question it like it doesn't always have to come from trauma it, it can mm -hmm. um but to permit yourself the experience if you know what let's go in it and i can always say stop totally and let's see what happens there and i think that's just so deeply beautiful so thank you so much for sharing that story i really really yeah. appreciate that yeah. yeah and yeah. to normalize like a lot of women have rape fantasies oh it's, yeah it's oh it's quite super common. common and a lot of women have gangbang fantasies too yep. and like that's that's real you know yeah that's real. yeah so a little personal story for me i uh i have a gangbang fantasy and i remember sharing that with a partner with a previous relationship and he was so upset about it <laughs> yeah. that i don't want to be with a woman that has fantasies like that yeah. And that was so hard for me to receive and, and, yeah. and to be shamed in a way by, for my sexual innocence. Cause I think that's what fantasies are. There's a sexual innocence to it. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a really long time to get over that. Yeah. So totally. to why I'm sharing that I think is to give the awareness that when somebody is sharing their fantasy or, or their desire with you to be very mindful that you are not shaming that you are not bringing judgment into the space because it's so it's so raw and vulnerable to share that with somebody and it's something yeah. you have no choice in you have mm -hmm. no choice in this this is so innocent totally yeah 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 mm. yeah mm, thanks yeah thanks for saying that uh, when you said that i i thought of two scenarios i would 
talking to a buddy of mine when his girlfriend shared that exact same fantasy. Yeah. And he got super triggered. Yeah. Super, super triggered. Yeah. And I get it. Like I and I think about myself, like, would I be able to do that? Yeah. You know, would I be able to be in the room with my partner yeah. and actually go through a gangbang fantasy with this person? Yeah. I don't know. No. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe yeah. someday, you know, but like that's and I think that's part of the thing with fantasy, you know, like you don't yeah. always like fantasies can remain fantasy and you yes. can do them, you know, th- but like yeah. you don't always have to act on all these fantasies. But I think what you're saying is just super important, like to understand yeah. that a fantasy, there is this innocence that's attached with it and there's different ways you can play with it too. Like yeah. I wanted to have a threesome for years and it was, it was like challenging for my relationships because the people who I was with didn't, you know, they were scared by that. And so yeah. one thing we started to do was when we would make love, just the two of us, like we would just imagine that there was another person there. Right. You know, right. Talking about that and like, what are they doing? And, yeah. You know, so there's, yeah, so many ways to explore this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So like, for instance, for the, the, the gangbang one or whatever, even if it's a rape fantasy, like it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you have to go into it. Like just having, being able to speak it out loud and have it be respected Totally. I don't think in that, in my case, but in that previous relationship, I didn't actually want to act it out, but I wanted it to be respected in a sense of just like, okay, yeah. okay. So what would that look like? Or, or okay, cool. You totally. get it. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Time's going very fast. I know. I feel like we could talk for a long time. About- <laughs> I feel like we just got started. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. Maybe okay. we need to do round two someday. Hmm? Yeah, Cause yes. there, are, there are a lot of questions on that list. Yeah. From, from a while ago. I know. Okay. What do you think uh, men wished women knew about them? Mm. Hmm. What do I think men wished women do about them? Yeah. What do you think men may feel like women are maybe not getting or not seeing? Wow. That's a, that's a tricky one. Um, well, it's just a, it's a complex one. Yeah. What do I think women are not getting? So what well, comes up for me, um, like the first, the first thing that comes up is like, um, I think women often feel like they have to fit into some sort of range or some sort of um, idea of who they are in order to be attractive to, mm-hmm. to a man. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. one thing that, I find super attractive is when a woman can embody all like all different kinds of archetypes within herself, like all different flavors, if you will, Mm -hmm. of existence. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like the creative artist, like Mm -hmm. the innocent person, like Mm -hmm. if you want to use the term, you know, the whore, Mm -hmm. like embody that archetype, like embody this whole range of Mm -hmm. stuff. And like, you don't have to fit into this one little box of your idea of what a woman is yes yes i love the whole the whole spectrum yeah and i think i think generally men do yeah yeah Yeah. generalization for sure but i think i think so i love that i think that's very beautiful yeah yeah and and one other thing unrelated to that that i i want people to just be aware of too and that Men may not when may, men might not want women to know this, but this is true. <laughs> Ooh. Like men are way more sensitive yeah. than they'll ever admit. And women probably actually know this. <laughs> but maybe men just don't admit this to themselves. But yeah, we're very sensitive. Um, yeah. even you know, those of us who put on a front and like do the tough guy image and like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Like, yeah, we're we're very sensitive creatures. Yeah, I I notice I'm always, when I hear that, I'm just struck with that. It must be really lonely. It must be really like, when you are this sensitive and it's not something you can admit to yourself, you can really like give space to, like that must be often a very lonely experience to to be in. Because when I feel shit, I'm on the phone with my girlfriends. Totally. Right? Right? And and, and I feel completely okay showing that to the world. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why like, Oh, uh, so fucking so important for men to go out and do this work and connect with other guys. Like, yeah. Go to a men's retreat. Go to yeah. a workshop. And I'm flashing back to all these different things that I've done with different men and yeah. it's like seeing. I remember seeing this like this MMA fighter guy. Yeah. Like at one of these things, he was a total like fighting badass. You know, like 
cry in these other men's arms because it was the first time he was ever actually vulnerable with other guys mm-hmm. and it was like one of the biggest openings Oof. of his life and it's like you know he had kept these guys out for so long but it's like actually doing that sort of thing makes you stronger yeah you know, like opening yourself to brothers like actually improves your life it improves your relationships and it makes you a stronger person because you realize yeah. oh this part of yourself that you've been hiding is actually it's real and it's worthy of attention and love and yeah. if you can love your full self, like, man, you know, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. My last question, or my almost last question, maybe. I would say last question, <laughs> then there's still like four. <laughs> Great. Feminine Great. flowing. Um, yes. I, one thing that's really struck me is that we really demonize the male turn on, right? Mm. So we, we think it's dangerous. We think, I don't know, men have no control over it uh, there. And I'm not going to like discount that there have been many, 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 many times for everybody, every, every, like in, in history that male turn on has been something dangerous, but for a man in a male's body, it must be really confusing to be with such a strong sexual force that is also so often demonized and think thought of as scary or as threatening or as something primal that they have no control over. Um, for the men that I know that have healed that relationship to their turn on, they're the most powerful men I've ever met. Mm -hmm. So do you, one, do you recognize that, um, this, this demonization? Um, and two, I think like, what can men do to help restore that again, to restore it to its sacredness? Or maybe the question is actually like, what's so beautiful about the male turn on? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, wow. This could be a half hour conversation. In itself. <laughs> That's okay. We can go a bit far. Um, we should have timestamps on this. Like, no. <laughs> if you want to hear this question, yeah, go, go to here. 47 minutes. And yeah. Um, oh, yeah. To acknowledge um, the world we're living in now, it's different from the world eight years ago. Yeah. And, you know, 10 years ago. It's very much the same world in many ways um, in terms of like un- the, all the same unhealthy behaviors exists and patterns exist but now there's more attention on all this stuff you know and there's more awareness around it which is fucking awesome super important very very important to talk about this stuff and you know in the climate of like me too post me too like and and consent awareness and all this stuff like it can be scary for some guys especially guys who haven't done investigation and exploration around what does consent actually mean yeah not just like consent means yes and no, obviously, but like there's so many deeper layers oh, yes. to it. There's so many things to explore. And, yeah. and I, you know, I would just encourage like in the current climate that is our reality that is going to only get more articulated and clear and, yeah. and transparent, like for any guy who's really wanting to step into himself, into yeah. his, his sexual self to like do your work to understand boundaries and consent look yeah. up the wheel of consent it's yeah. fucking incredible and it doesn't yeah. sound anything like what the name is like it'll no. change your sex life forever <laughs> um, yeah and learn how to talk about uncomfortable things yeah. learn how to have the conversation like the sexual elevator speech you know like before you have sex with somebody new like what are your yeah. desires what are your fears what are your boundaries like are yeah. you in a relationship with anybody else what's yeah. your sexual health status like yeah. all this stuff like yeah. build your sexual toolbox you know yeah yeah build your sexual repertoire you yeah. know your your pack your like belt like whatever you want to call it yeah. so that when you do actually experience this turn on when you do experience like that the potency that is the male sexual charge yeah you have a healthy avenue and tools to be able to move forward with that clearly. Yeah. Where A, you're not going to feel anxious and concerned that you're going to do anything quote unquote wrong, but B, yeah. the person who you're with is going to feel safe and is going to yeah. want to fully receive this, this from you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I recognize that that takes work. You yeah. Know? yeah. But if you're a guy listening to this and you feel any sort of anxiety or closure mm-hmm. at the thought of like totally ravishing your partner. Yes. Yeah. Um, then like do some work around this and it will only improve your life. I love that actually f- of, cause I, a lot of women want to be pushed against the wall. A lot of men want to do it and they're terrified of doing it. Totally. And to actually 
like one of the ways to be with that is to figure out when is it safe and when isn't it and when is it yeah. safe is when there are clear communication around it and and you know there's there's space to say no or there's there's time to to be like okay are you so good yeah okay totally right yeah. to have those check-in yeah. moments and, and that creates safety and then in that there's much more room to play Totally. And you don't always have to be having this long conversation no. before every sexual experience. Like you create <laughs> the foundation, you create the, the field, if you will, yeah. you know, yeah. and then within that, like, yeah, of course, check in every once in a while and when yeah. feels appropriate, but like you can create the field to where you're in your kitchen, you know, yeah. two weeks after, you know, since your last talk and you see your partner and then they're cooking and all of a sudden you just take them and like throw them up against yeah. the wall, like pull their pants down and that's okay. Yes. You know? Yeah. And it's fucking sexy oh. to, for a woman generally, I see your reaction, but like, yeah, when <laughs> yeah. a woman experiences that, they're like, oh, uh, yeah. Yummy. You know? yeah. yeah. And, and I will speak into that briefly from like a women's perspective. Like I, for instance, with my current partner, I know I can always say no and he's yeah. going to be totally okay with it. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's not yeah. a big deal when I say no. And so he has much more space to just try out things all the time because I know I can at any moment say, eh, actually i wanted to watch a movie totally. right so yeah. that creates the 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 trust in the relationship and then when there's trust there's much more room to try things out yeah absolutely and i think you you just spoke to something that's also really important is like cultivating your no yeah it's super super important practice yeah. it practice it practice it like empower your no charge up your no and yeah. when you're really clear in your no then you're tr your, you can trust yourself more and your partner will trust you more too yeah, absolutely. Like, I know if I feel that my partner won't take care of himself, then I find it really hard to trust them and I actually open less. Yeah. And so yeah. that's also on the flip side. Like when my partner can completely feel that I will stand for my no, he knows that he can, he can let go because mm -hmm. he doesn't have to manage that for me. He doesn't have to be like hyper vigilant on what's going on with me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Last question. Bitch. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh i'm thinking what i want to do is the last question mm, yes what's your favorite thing about the feminine um <laughs> well i'll tell you what just went into my brain immediately <laughs> uh which is just when when you said feminine i thought women and then immediately it was just like smell oh um, i love that oh yeah. yes yeah it's uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean that. so many things but that was just first i'm exploring with this person right now um deepening in relationship with this person and i'm just completely in love with her smell it's like a drug it's fucking awesome oh my I'm god i it. love that yeah i love it i think something that the feminine very much enjoys from the masculine is kind of like being engaged with on all senses mm -hmm. and like this is just like a top tip to guys like just like smell her taste her see her hear her all of it like totally. feel her like just being completely engaged in all the senses is so attractive and just feels so engaged totally it feels like you're fully there with somebody yeah so, yeah and like yeah. every part like her head her armpits her yes. throat her breasts so her, her yoni like her yeah. legs like all of this you know and then really pay attention to that and if you're exploring with somebody new and they don't smell good to you like that's a really good sign to not keep exploring <laughs> with that person that's true. That's bi biology saying, actually, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Unless they're on hormonal birth control. And then that's a whole other discussion. That changes their yeah. constitution. Yeah. 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 I love that. What is, what's like, what is the feminine for you? Like, is it, is it, I don't know. The, the, is it nature? Is it? <laughs> it's the fact that you just asked me another question after you said <laughs> you were going to finish with that one question. I'm an um, yeah. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's, you know, feminine when I detach, when I detach it from the idea of genitals and, yeah. and sexual identity. Yeah. The feminine for me is more like, yeah, the cycles of things, the seasons, the oh, yeah. flow, like emotions, you know, the daytime, nighttime, the, the fluctuations of everything fluctuations right. within myself, you know, my own right. emotions, my own, like ejaculatory cycles. Like right. if you want to get even more esoteric, it's just like matter, like this cup, you know, this microphone that I'm talking into this computer, you know, it's all. Yeah. And, you know, conversely, like if you're going that route, like the masculine is the energetic substrate or it's the yeah. constant, it's the yeah. sun. It's the thing that's always there. It's that penetrating yeah. force. And, yeah. The penetrating and the dancing, you know, yeah. 
And there's part of me that wants to separate totally from the, even the labels of masculine and feminine. Um, I agree. But that's, you know, that's, that's, that's what we're using right now for this yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I, I, I wish it wasn't as gendered, but the gendered part makes it also easy for a lot of people to grasp. Totally. But everybody, regardless of your gender, you need to cultivate both your masculine and feminine so that you have choice. Yeah. So, and to even make it non-gendered, cultivate your yin, yin and, and your yang, yang, whatever you, you know? want to call it, but so that yeah. you have choice. So it's like, actually, what, what am I best in? Am I best or like this hour, what am I my best in? Am I my best if I'm more right. in my yang energy? Am I best if I'm more in my yin energy? And to have a choice to, to take care of yourself. Yeah. 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 I love that. Okay. <sighs> if people want to <laughs> learn more about you or work with you, where can they find you? What's, what's going on in your world? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so www.taylorjohnson.life is my website. I have a course for men all about semen retention coming up in a couple of weeks. Nice. Um, I don't know when this video is going to go out, but it's going to happen again Sweet. later this year at some point. Yeah. Um, so that's it. Yeah. And I have another course happening in August around learning how to have non-ejaculatory orgasms and all this stuff. And Amazing. so my website's the place to find that out. Also, I'm on Instagram at, at Taylor Clark Johnson. And, nice. Uh, yeah, those are the two best places right now. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and your insight and, and, and your views. I really, really appreciate this. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. This is, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording here.